Thank you all for joining me today. I am your man, Corb J. And thank you for being here today. I want to say thank you to everyone who has supported and continue to support this channel. I truly, truly appreciate that. I want to get right into this video because this particular topic that I'm having today is one that I think uh, needs to be addressed. I haven't seen anyone on the internet or any other channel address this particular topic the way I am going to address it today. It is a topic that has to do with the elephant in the room when it comes to Nigeria-Ghana relationship. And while I would think and I would like to believe that these two have what I called and I coined friendly banter, competitive animosity, brothers. However, they is the reality is that there is a deep-seated bad blood between these two. Now, this comes from somewhere. And I'm going to tell, tell you all today, and I'm going to deal with the root cause of what fractured the relationship between Nigerians and Ghana. I'm going to tell you who started it. I'm going to tell you exactly who has maintained the animosity and who has really pushed a lot of the aggression. Now, what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to be fair and I'm going to use history to discuss what I am going to go over in this video. Now, this video also follows a survey that I put out on my community page where I asked the simple question, who would you say is the biggest hater of Nigerians and their success? I listed uh, known offenders over the years of those that have been critical of Nigerians. I listed um, a few known ones. Uh, they were African-Americans, Ghanaians, Cameroonians, South Africans, and lastly, Kenyans. Now, there were over 120 people that took this and participated in this survey. And of the 122, 120 plus people that participated, 83% of those all said Ghanaians were the biggest haters of Nigerians. Now, I want to deal with that because that is the elephant in the room. And if you, I would imagine if this question was posted or this survey was also given to people in Ghana to answer that question, I'm sure they would probably tell you that Nigerians are their biggest uh, haters too. So, neither, these two have a history and they had, there is a, uh, there's a bad blood between these two. I want to deal with this. Here's what you're going to get in this video. As I mentioned, you're going to get the root cause, what truly is the reason behind the bad blood. Now, depending on who you ask this question, if you ask Ghanaians uh, the question, and you ask them, where do you think it went all wrong? Because at one point, these two were very tight. They were very, they were allies. Um, I mean, they're neighboring countries. And when I mean neighboring countries, they are, they're only separated by Togo and Republic of Benin. And then north of Ghana, you have Burkina Faso. However, Togo and Republic of Benin are Francophone countries. Nigeria and Ghana were colonized by the British, which is why most people relate to them as neighbors, even though they're not really neighbors, even though they're west of Africa. But because they were colonized, both colonized by the British, you know, it makes sense that people would relate these two together. And their cultures are almost similar in nature. Okay. However, if you ask Ghanaians, um, who started it or where did it all go wrong? Most Ghanaians will point to 1983. Uh, and they will use that as a reason for their animosity or their bad bloods against Nigerians. In 1983, there was the expulsion of 2 million undocumented immigrants in Nigeria. And over 1 million of those were Ghanaians. So Ghanaians were expelled and were driven out of Nigeria in 1983. 
And it became a very popular thing in history, which was then coined Ghana must go. I want to talk to you about that situation. So most Ghanaians point to that as their reason for perhaps their, I don't want to use hate, their not so happy with Nigerians. Let's use that. That's a lot more softer way to say it. Now, if you ask Nigerians, depending on how old that Nigerian is, they would also point to that event. Nigerians who want to be uh, sympathetic to Ghanaians, they'll point to that event as the reason. And they would point to Nigerians being the first to cast the first stone. Now, I want to tell you that. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about that situation. Now, in 1983, it is true, and it is historically documented that in 1983, under the administra administration of Shehu Shagari, who was the then head of state of Nigeria, there were over 2 million undocumented immigrants that were sent out or expelled or driven out of Nigeria during this period in time. And it is true that Ghana was mostly made of largely the number of those immigrants. And so that is actually a factual thing. And so that is truly historically documented. However, that was a retaliatory situation. The event that happened in 1983 was a retaliatory response to Ghanaians who had already years prior did that against Nigeria. You see, that's the part that I want to talk to you guys about today because there is a mis, uh, there's a misunderstanding that Nigerians threw the first stone. However, that event that happened in 1983, like I talked about, which was then coined and has since been coined, Ghana must go. It was so bad that Ghana's, Ghanaians felt very, uh, very uh, 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 attacked. Nigerians were very aggressive. Nigerians were very, uh, 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 really, really, it was a bad situation for Ghanaians, uh, no doubt whatsoever. It was so bad that even Nigerians were, so, were driving them out of their land that they even helped them pack their stuff and put them in what was, had since been talked about or called the, the plastic bag that had checked striped lines colorful lines and that bag now has been known as Ghana must go bag and Ghanaians were driven out of Nigeria. Now here's the part that I want to talk to you about as I mentioned is that was a retaliatory response to 1969. Now what happened in 1969? In 1969, Ghanaians drove Nigerians the same way that Nigerians drove Ghana out of their land. Ghanaians drove Nigeria out of Ghana in 1969. Okay, so let's talk about that. So in 1969, um, this was right under General Ankara, who had just taken over um, from Kwame Nkrumah. Kwame Nkrumah was Ghana's first prime minister and the founder of Ghana. He was the one that secured Ghanaians' independence from the British colonial rule. Now, let me say something about Kwame Nkrumah real quickly before I get into this video. Kwame Nkrumah is someone that I feel and I believe that every African owes a debt of gratitude. He is one of those leaders in Africa that we will forever be grateful for. Kwame Nkrumah, when he was securing the independence of Ghana, said, it is not enough that Ghana is free from the British colonial rule. That unless Africa is free, Ghana will never be free. And he, just like many like that have come after him, really tried to unite Africa, tried to really break Africa off the clutches of the Western world. And they didn't like him for it. The British government, as well as the United States government, didn't like Kwame Nkrumah for that. And so they plotted against him and plotted against his ideology 
and he stands on making Africa free. And finally, he was ousted out in a coup in 1966. Kwame Nkrumah is someone, again, that I said, all Africans, whatever country you come from, owe a debt of gratitude to. So after he was ousted out, Joseph Ankara became the prime minister, uh, I mean, the head of state for Ghana. He was the first military head of state in Ghana. And while he was there, introduced the Aliens Compliance Order. And this order basically essentially was an immigration order which says that everyone in the in Ghana who is in Ghana who is not Ghanaian who is undocumented need to leave Ghana he introduced that however it was done during the later years of his administration and that order was carried out by Kofi Bosia who was the first democratically elected prime minister of Ghana and this happened in 1969. Now, Nigerians prior to this order being carried out by Ghanaians have lived in Ghana for years. And so when that happened, it was a disruption and there were millions of Nigerians also who were expelled out of Ghana and they were driven out of their land. So that is the story behind that. And you wouldn't find this story that I've just told you all over the internet. What you'll find is the story regarding Ghana was going in 1983. However, go ahead and research it out. The 1983 story, the 1983 expulsion of Ghanaians from Nigeria at the hands of the administration of Shehu Shagari, who was the then head of state of Nigeria, was a retaliatory response to Ghanaians back in 1969. So Ghana threw the first stone. So now I want to talk to you guys about what really caused these two to do this. And it's also going to address the root cause of the animosity that I believe. And I think and many Ghanaians also believe this based on what I've heard from watching Ghanaians channel blogs. I've read blogs and I've also watched a lot of the podcasts from Ghanaians this one single reason is the, it is the deep is the depth or the root cause of what I believe and many also believe is the reason why Ghana has been obsessed with Nigerian success over the years. Now let me start by going over what caused these two countries from driving each other out of their these two people from driving each other out of their countries. So these two, I mentioned earlier on that these two were colonized by the British. Ghana first got its independence in 1957. And in 1957, all the way through, for a long time, Ghana was a successful and thriving country. So Ghanaians have always maintained and always had the pride that they got their independence before Nigeria. Nigeria got its independence in 1960, three years after Ghana got its independence. And Ghanaians, in, in Ghana, during, from 1957 all the way to 1965, Ghana thrived. Ghana's uh, economy was the strongest in the entire Africa. And, and this was due to their, their production of cocoa. Ghana was the largest producer of cocoa. And they exported cocoa out, which was then used for, to the Western world to do chocolate, candy and all of that. So Ghana's economy thrived. And in that period in time, naturally, a lot of neighboring countries went to Ghana. People from Togo went to Ghana. People from Burkina Faso went to Ghana. And naturally, people from Nigeria went to Ghana. And so Ghana's economy thrived. And so uh, during that period in time, Nigeria discovered oil in 1958. Close to when they were about to get independence, Nigeria discovered oil. And the economic scale tilted towards Nigeria's favor. Nigeria started to export oil. Nigeria started to drill oil. It attracted international companies. Mobile oil began to set shop in Nigeria. Um, Shell began to sell, uh, set up shop in Nigeria. And Nigeria's economy began to really slowly take off. It didn't fully take off 
all till 1970 was when Nigeria had its strongest economy. And during this period in time, Ghana's economy started to really deteriorate. Cocoa, the price of cocoa had crashed and people were not longer demanding cocoa from Ghana. The price had crashed. Famine had ravaged the land in Ghana. It was a very, very difficult time in Ghana. We're talking from the period of 1968 all the way to 1970. And then the worst came in 1974. Ghana's economy flatlined. Now, if you were old enough, if you talk to older Ghanaians who are at this age, who are probably in their 60s or 70s today, they'll tell you the story that I'm just telling you. It was a tough time in Ghana. Famine ravaged the line. The uh, people that had degrees could not get any job. It was rough for Ghanaians. And for Nigerians, life began to become really good. Nigerians began to really enjoy the fruit of the labor, the oil, uh, the oil, the product, the oil product, and the sale of oil, which Nigerians sold to countries like United States, to Canada, to Saudi Arabia, to England began to really help the livelihood of Nigerians, and they began to thrive. Ghanaians naturally moved into Nigeria, just as Nigerians did years prior. This is how millions of uh, Ghanaians made their way to Ghana. And most of Ghanaians became teachers in Nigeria. They took jobs that Nigerians did not want to take, which was teaching, which was housekeeping. So those type of jobs were the jobs that most Ghanaians really took in Nigeria and they worked at in homes, became housekeepers for rich Nigerians. And that was the job that they had. And that had all the way through 1974, all the way to the 80s. Now in the 80s, things began to really turn differently for Nigeria. Oil prices began to also crash. Nigeria could no longer sell their oil to countries like the United States, who was now experiencing a recession. This was the period in time of President Reagan. The U.S. began to really look inwards for how to really maximize or minimize a lot of their cost or dependency to foreign oil. So the U.S. began to drill their own oil. Texas was a, was a primary source of that. And so no longer was the, were they depending so much on uh, importing Nigerian oil to their country and as well as many other countries. So Nigeria began to really slow and this began to affect Nigeria's economy in the 80s. Now, it didn't get bad in Nigeria just like it did in Ghana, but it, cer- it certainly slowed the, the, uh, the, the, the money they were making and the wealth that was coming into the country through oil. So Nigeria started having a hard time and so they started looking inwardly on how to cut cost. And naturally, then they remembered naturally the situation that had occurred in 1969. And they saw all these foreigners in their, con- in their country, most of which were Ghanaians. And Shehu Shagari, who was the, pre- uh, the head of state at the time, um, wanted to do something about this. And he wanted to really cut the cost of those who were milking or feeding off the resources of Nigerians during that time. And so he and many Nigerians remembered the situation that happened in Ghana against Nigeria, against Nigerians in 1969. And that's how he expelled a lot of Ghanaians during that time. So that is the history behind these two in terms of that. Now, the question now is, was it fair? Was it fair for Nigerians to retaliate against Ghanaians who first threw the stone in 1969. I'll let you make that decision and judgment. Now, here is the real reason, and I'm going to try to finish up this video and I'll close. I talked about the true reason why Ghanaians have truly felt, because it's not the Ghana must go thing. It's really not. The Ghana must go thing was a retaliation against what they did. So that's fair. It's one, you, you, you know, one person did it, the other one retaliated. Okay? So you would, you would think that that should be a fair deal and everyone should just be okay with that. The real reason that Ghanaians have truly felt 
and have had this obsession and perhaps jealousy against Nigeria is truly because I mentioned early on that Ghana got its independence before Nigeria. To Ghanaians, they've always felt that they should be ahead of Nigeria and much further than they are today than Nigeria. It goes with the African culture. You know, in Africa, when you have siblings, when you have a family of three brothers, the belief in Africa is the firstborn is expected to be more successful than his siblings. The firstborn is expected to get their, their, their shit together, to get their stuff together. That is the expectation of all, African, all Africans in the continent. And so Ghanaians have always felt that because they got their independence first, they should be a lot further than Nigeria. And for a little, for a little while, they were. In the early 60s, they were. But have since lost that place have since lost that, have not been able to catch up or gain ever since. And that is the deepest, the deeper seated animosity that I believe and many believe from what I've heard from even Ghanaians is the real reason why they've always obsessed over Nigerians. Now, I would like to go into how Ghana lost this. And what has plagued Ghana over the years. And this is based on, again, a lot of things from Ghanaians. Because it is true that Ghana should be a lot further than this. It is true. It is true that Ghana got their independence first and they should have maintained that status as Jan of Africa, but Nigeria did. Nigeria gained that status of being Jan of Africa when they found and discovered oil. Because after that, it was, a, it was game over. Nigeria has maintained its status as the largest economy. And, and in addition to that, in which oil is the biggest revenue generator for Nigeria. In addition to that, Nigerians have also developed other things. Like in the entertainment industry, Afrobeat is huge. When you compare Nigeria's industry to Ghanaian's industry, most people know uh, Afrobeat is, is huge. Nollywood is huge. Nollywood, which is a Nigerian film industry, is, wa is widely known compared to Ghana. No one knows what Ghanaian film industry is. And a lot of Ghanaians go to Nigeria and work with Nigerian producers to be featured in Nollywood. So that alone itself is uh, something that Nigerians have been proud of. And has also caused a lot of animosity. It was even recently that we heard that Ghana has been attempting to task Nigerian filmmakers in Ghana or ban Nigerians from making films in Ghana because of the popularity of Nigerian film industry in Ghana. Okay. We all know about Afrobeat, the success of Afrobeat. So when you see these things coming out of one country who got its independence after you, naturally, there's a feeling of let down by Ghanaians. There's a feeling of we've lost the mark. We really missed the opportunity. There's that feeling. And that is the deepest, that is the deep seated um, animosity that you tend to find is the root cause of a lot of the obsession with Nigeria. Now, here's the part that bothers me with my brothers and sisters in Ghana. Is that when you look at the, the economy of these two countries, Nigeria certainly hasn't had it as a linear trajectory. It hasn't been a linear pace for Nigeria. Nigeria's had it up and down, up and down, up and down. These two countries have had civil unrest between these two countries. There has been coup between these two countries. These two countries were both colonized by the same um, Europeans, British Empire. These two countries have not had it easy with these two countries. Now, the attitude between the citizens of these two countries is what differs between these two countries. When I talk about the attitude here real quickly, there is a general attitude in Ghana 
which most Ghanaians even coined PhD, which is that Ghanaians don't work with each other. They don't work well with each other. They attack each other. They pull down the success of each other. It is called PhD. Pull him down is what they coined it. Ghanaians coined this. Now, that is also something you'll find in Nigeria with Nigerians not wanting to work with each other, but it's not as bad as it is in Ghana. And I think that that's what has caused and stifled their growth. I think that their inability to work with each other, to respect each other's craft, not to be jealous of each other, is what has stifled their growth in the music industry, in the film industry, as well as even in their business, agricultural industry. Ghanaians envy Ghanaians. It is a fact. And it's something that if you talk to Ghanaians who are truth tellers, they'll tell you this. It is a fact. And many Ghanaians have gone to Nigeria for an opportunity to be successful because they know that they will be embraced in Nigeria. Now, to be fair, Nigerians also have this problem of not working with each other. You'll find that in Nigeria. You'll find Nigerians will even tell you. However, it is it is compared to Ghana. It is very uh, it's non comparable. It is it is minuscule compared to what we're seeing in Ghana. Nigerians are more likely to work with each other than Ghanaians working with Ghanaians. And I think that until Ghana starts to work with each other and until they really begin to embrace each other and see each other as something of value, right? It'll be very difficult for the country to excel because the economy of Ghana has truly been struggling for a while. Ghana's economy has truly struggled for a long time. They're, they've borrowed money, more money than any other African country. Their current uh, president has been to IMF to borrow money. And Ghana right now is even at the brink of bankruptcy. Ghana, Egypt, and a couple other countries in Africa are at the brink of going the Sri Lanka way. I want you to take a look at this segment on Gravitas, which was aired last year on a on few countries in Africa who are at the brink of having the civil unrest, just like Sri Lanka. Take a look at this. There are 69 countries that face all the three risks, food, energy, finance, all three. 69 countries could go the Sri Lanka way. 25 in Africa, 25 in the Asia Pacific, and 19 in Latin America. Which countries are these? We'll start with Egypt, the land of pharaohs. It is in the throes of a financial crisis. Egypt is the world's largest importer of wheat. Russia and Ukraine were its top suppliers. As they fight now, the supplies are running out. Last month, Egypt said that its wheat reserves will not last more than three months. Next, we have Tunisia, the birthplace of the Arab Spring. Its economy is overheating. Foreign debt accounts for 100% of its GDP. The trade deficit has widened to $800 million. Inflation stands at 7%. Fuel prices at record highs. Experts say Tunisia could soon face civil unrest. In sub-Saharan Africa, Ghana, Kenya, South Africa, Ethiopia, could be the worst hit. In Ghana, debt levels are soaring, interest payments are choking the economy, a debt crisis looks imminent. In Kenya, the debt has climbed to $70 billion, that's 70% of its GDP. Last week, they got a $244 million loan from the IMF to weather this economic storm. In South Africa, the debt has reached 80% of its GDP. There's a looming threat of state collapse, a rerun of the 2021 civil unrest. So that is, that is, a, uh, that is a disturbing and a scary thing. We in Nigeria don't want Ghana to fail. It would not do any Africa, African country good that Ghana fails. Ghana is a strong ally of Nigeria. Ghana and Nigeria have always traded for years. They've always been partners for years. Ghana gets 25% of its energy from Nigeria, which has powered Ghana. Nigeria also has benefited from Ghanaians over the years. Many Nigerians live in Ghana. Ghana has a great system. Uh, in many cases, people would say that a lot of their system really is much better than that you would find in Nigeria. So there are things that Ghana does very well that Nigeria can emulate from. There are things that Ghanaians do very well 
the Nigerians can really pick up on and and, and really emulate from Ghanaians. Because Ghana has some things to teach Nigeria, just as Nigerians have some things to teach Ghana. So the idea of these two having this type of bad blood is to me ridiculous. However, it has always existed. And my 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 advice to Ghanaians mostly, because when I watch these two, it seems that Ghana has it in for Nigeria. I mentioned how you know the expulsion of these two from each other's country happened in 1969 and 1983. You would think that that's where it stopped. But then Ghanaians had this xenophobia attack against Nigerians in 2020. We saw that same behavior in Ghana, where they are attacking Nigerians and driving them out of Ghana and using false claims that they were drug, they were drug dealers in Ghana when, when actually these people were business owners who were business owners in Ghana and were trying to live and feed their family. And just because they were out competing the locals, they destroyed and drove them out of their land. That happened in 2020. It also recently happened just a couple of days ago where this Nigerian woman and this is something that just recently happened. A Nigerian woman who is a hairstylist who has a wig business. Just because she was f successful, she had a more clever and much unique way of branding and strategizing and selling her product. The women in Ghana, just a couple of days ago, attacked her for it. They made claims that she was trying to undermine her, undermine other people by discounting her product. To put others out of business. Can you imagine that? So this type of aggression. We see one-sided aggression. From Ghanaians against Nigerians. And then if Nigerians retaliate tomorrow. It will be all over the airwave. That Nigerians are so much against Ghana. And Ghana, Ghanaians are too quick. To forget. That they are always the ones. Throwing the first stone. So I will just say. Lastly before I close. That Ghana will need to understand. That Nigeria is your biggest market. Nigeria is the biggest ally. You cannot make it in Africa without Nigerians. You can't. To exclude Nigeria from the equation of your success is to your own demise. Because Nigeria is the one aiding and holding Ghana up. Nigeria's economy is the largest in Africa. And to exclude or to attack that economy is asinine and is ridiculous. It only causes your demise. It only causes your bankruptcy. And that is what, that's, the, that's the advice that I will give to my Ghanaians. To my Nigerians, I will say this. That it is easy for us to be arrogant. But I will caution you not to be arrogant. It is easy for you to say, hey, we don't need Ghana. But you need Ghana. It is easy for you to say, hey, that we are the ones that are powering Ghana. We're providing them with resources. It's easy for you to say that. But I will caution you not to do that. Because at one point, you know, Ghana was also, even while they've always been, in terms of population, they've always been smaller in number. But even that smaller number years ago, at one point, really dominated in terms of economy. And it could happen again. So my, my advice would be that these two work with each other, try to really elevate each other. And I think that there's much money to be made when we both work together we both try to elevate each other and we both, they strengthen numbers because when the enemy from the outside comes in, the fact that we are strong and we're able to collaborate and work together will make, give us a better chance of finding outside forces rather than fighting each other. Thank you all for watching. I hope you like this video. Please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe, share this video, and I will see you all for the fishing in an under so can store up by my side. Oh, why? So the tour up for the four me or the baby. But the my yard is yard is don't be little bother on it. Oh, men do effect of only. But they are legged a minty. Oh, you will hard it hard it hard it. Information and safety. You can only the baby. Oh, you come at the end.